This week, Ravnica Allegiance has been spoiled. Jake, what do you think so far? I think, uh, like so many Magic sets uh, in the past and so many Magic sets that'll be in the future, there's some good cards and there's some uh, some bad cards. Oh, yes. But as we do, every time a set comes out, we are going to look over the Mythic Rares. Yes, and so as of today, all Mythics have been spoiled, and so we're going to uh, just go through A to Z. Um, yeah, no sp- no specific order except alphabetical, right? We're going to talk about what formats we think they'll be good for, if we think that they will go up or down or have any value at all. Jake, you ready to rock and roll? Dude, um, I am ready to roll and and rock and rock and roll and stop, drop and roll. Title sequence now. Everybody, welcome back into another episode of Jake and Joel Our Magic. We're going to get to Mythic Rares of Ravnica Allegiance. First, we just wanted to ask if you would please subscribe. Yeah, consider uh, going down there, hitting some buttons, uh, click on click on something if you're logged in. Uh, if, if you're not logged in, then just uh, sit back, relax, and if you're eating popcorn, eat popcorn. And if you are <laughs> drinking Pepsi, drink that Pepsi. Other little bit of business to get to, do not forget... The next Wednesday, January 16th, we will be streaming marathon style, 12 plus hours of Ravnica Allegiance with our preview account. Thank you to Wizards for providing that. Yeah, very, uh, very random, but very cool. And uh, even though we only have just over like 1200 subs, it's really cool to be recognized and uh, have that opportunity. So that is very cool. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Let's get to the cards. Yes, dude. First up, Angel of Grace. It is a 5-4 flying white angel that is already freaking me out, Jake. Uh, bro. <laughs> this card is heat. There I... is so much <laughs> that is that is good about this card. Uh... <laughs> I really love it and really hate it at the same time. I mean, we already have Lyra Dawnbringer that every time it hits, I just go, ugh. And now we have a new card for me to go, ugh, every time I see it. Yeah, uh, the fact that it isn't legendary as well. Um, right. There's no reason if you're running Angels to not run all five. Let's just let's just kick it back to, like, the old days uh, in, you know, like, a card like Sarah Angel, which was, like, right. uncommon. And it was just, Or like, when we started playing, Baneslayer Angel was just the... It was the nuts. That was... One of the best finishers that you could have for a control deck with white. Yeah, and if, imagine if Baneslayer Angel had uh, Flash. You know, I would ch- <laughs> I would trade so much of what Baneslayer Angel does for Flash. And I think oh the fact gosh. that this comes in, and um, I mean, it's already I, I forget the card, but there's the um, there's the one card where you know it, it's it's a, uh, an instant. Mm-hmm. And uh, it does the exact same effect that this does when it enters the battlefield. I don't know why I can't think of the card. Yeah, I got but, you. But the fact that you can exile this from your yard to make your life total 10, I think that this is just absolutely um, absolutely a house of a card. Obviously unlimited and constructed. Uh, it's hard to tell if something like this goes and sees play in modern. I would, I would doubt it, but Flash, you know, you never know. It's going to see standard play, and I bet this card is going to be 20, 30 bucks. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, uh, shout out to Card Kingdom. I, I normally watch their prices the most right right when a set is coming out. Uh, I feel like they have their finger on the pulse for the most point. Uh, uh, but I, I think at seventeen ninety nine, I think the card is, is, yeah, probably about as low as it's going to be. I mean, it depends on if it just absolutely for some reason doesn't get played. Right. I think this price is really, you know, reasonable. All right, next card on the radar is Biogenic Ooze. <laughs> Dude, I actually, I, I actually really like this card. It looks interesting, and honestly, people are already on Twitter talking about how they want to break this. You know, I mean, for the value, you've got two two twos on the turn it comes into play. If it yep. survives to untap, you've got two three threes, and then you just start you know i guess oozing out until they answer it because I, you don't want it to out. overrun you you got to kill the you know mom biogenic ooze to 
yeah, stunt the growth of the others, but and here's yeah, the thing. It, it could be great. It does cost five, and it dies to shock. Right. But if this card goes unanswered, it if wins it goes the game. unanswered, I think the fact that you just said dies to shock is what's going to keep it out of constructed play, um, because shock is I, every deck that runs red pretty much has a shock in it. I think at a price point of nine ninety nine, that's that's like a fair price until we see what the card. Uh, does I think it's probably going to be. So this looks like a five dollar mythic to me. Yeah, or 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 sub five. Yeah, yeah, I think it would definitely go go lower. Next up, captive audience. I gotta tell you, I think this is the favorite card I've seen spoiled so far, just because of what it is. The thing that makes it so cool is these different modes. It's so Rakdos. It's so Punisher, and I want to figure out how to make a seven cost enchantment work in standard now. <laughs> Well, dude, oh my gosh. Well, let's go over the modes really quick. Your life total becomes four, discard yep. your hand. Each Huge. opponent creates five 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. Right. There, None of these are a miss. No. They're all At very all. good. They're all very good, and they're going to have to choose. I mean, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't, if you resolve it. Now, where do I think this card is going to live? EDH. This is a commander card, but... I mean, possibly standard, I, nothing outside that. It's definitely a for fun kind of, you know, brewing card. But for that reason, I think it's going to hold between 5 and $10. It doesn't look like a $5 Mythic to me, but it also doesn't look like a $15 well, Mythic to me. Right now on Card Kingdom, this card is $0.99. Cents. Okay, there And you I go. will just say, I bought... Uh, I bought eight of them at 99 cents just because I was like, this is never going to go lower than 99 cents. Right. It's a great EDH card. But here's the thing is I think this card finds its way into like a Grixis control deck. As that a finisher? Is simply, simply focused on this card as a finisher and Banefire. Maybe. Because of, you're I looking just, at though you're looking at a format with Nicol Bolas, the teenager, whatever that card's name is, that flips into the best Bolas Walker that exists. That's the Grixis finisher, and it's a much no, more I powerful mean, finisher. But this is definitely more fun. I think this is super fun, and I think it's one of these cards that's like out of left field. Like you wait oh, yeah. until your opponent is tapped out, and you get this card out. Also, there are cards, you know, worth noting that um create treasure tokens and there's ways to get this out earlier sure so i think that this card has some potential and i think it's one of these things that people are going to be looking for obviously it's a great limited card maybe like um, a jund cheaty deck that's just ramp 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 i mean i think that would be great and i hope that this can you know see some standard play because it's the exact kind of thing that i i you know, want players oh, to dude, embrace more. This is get... the kind of this is the kind of card that we live for. We live we love oh, stuff bro, like this. I can't wait to brew with this card. Oh, I'm telling I you. Hey, you put it alongside a another bunch of plug. Pops, January and... 16th, we will be playing a captive audience deck. Mark our words. I got to give a shout out to uh, Dimitri Burmak, by the way, the artist for this card. This art is so sick to me. Looking at yeah, captive audience, cool. turning it around, we're, we get to see the reactions of their faces instead of what's actually happening. Looking at the difference of the reactions in the faces, the goblin, he's seen this before, the man on the right is just like horrified, the woman is taken aback, the blue thing behind her is kind of entertained, and you've got the little homunculus, uh, flip them, however you pronounce his name, chilling on the shoulder of that like senate member so i don't know Do this know card this just from? nails from it from on. no you know where not off the top of my head and it's yeah, not honestly, a story moment but it's just rakdos is like the the theater of the macabre the theater of the violent in this set no, that's they've it, they've it, made honestly, the cult of rakdos really like theatrical no and i get that it looks like the group of people that would be looking at the havoc festival yeah right it exactly like, which like, is i mean it's got it's going in your uh Carador, what is his name or Karavik, yeah. Karavik. it's going it, this is like an auto include must include in Karavik because one it's good you're essentially taking a player out if it resolves and two uh, it, it fits the theme of the deck so much like you said it they're watching the havoc festival and going Oh my gosh, we can't leave or they'll kill us. We have to. They're forcing us to watch the Cult of Rakdos. <laughs> Dude, just like imagine, imagine resolving two of these against an opponent. Right. 
Oh, well, I mean, that's that's just ridiculous at that point. Yeah, I know. I, I know, but still, it's just... I, I, I love that this card is printed. I can't wait to brew with it. All right, next up, we have Domri, Chaos Bringer. A Planeswalker. Planeswalker. Uh, now, we have the old Domri, which is known for being kind of lackluster. I think that this card is... Uh, I think it's okay. And I think... Um, you know, the power level is yet to be discovered. I really do like that minus three. Minus and, three is uh, good, but dude, I think the plus one is good too. I mean, look at it this way. Turn four, Domri. Sure. Bring in a one drop creature. It turns into a two, two, just to give himself a blocker. You know, if you don't already have blockers in a gruel deck. Sure. Turn yeah. five, unt if you untap with him, take him up one, add one mana, add the five plus it, you got a hasty Carnage Tyrant, or a eight, seven Trampling Hexproof Carnage Tyrant. I think that yeah. this card is heat. I've been playing a green deck for a while now, and it's morphed, you know, sometimes it's mono green. Like last yeah. rotation, it was mono green when it had a Cartouche of Strength as a major, you know, trample enabler and removal on it, you know, combined. But now it's got a splash of black in there for getting creature cards back. I think that this is an excellent card for that deck, and I'll definitely be trying out a splash red. Essentially, I mean, we've got Gruel now, so it just makes sense for me to try and splash red, and I think this card is a must include. Well, you know, for a creature heavy deck, I think what, what's really cool is that for four mana, you are getting five loyalty, which is a lot. A ton for four Which mana. is great. Oh, yeah. And and the fact that you can bring Domri down three and grab two dudes in a creature-heavy deck yep. is huge heat for your hand. And then the fact that after doing that, Domri is still at two loyalty, so your opponent feels the obligation to, oh, God, I need to answer that Domri, yeah. but now my opponent is going to keep you know playing dudes. And so I think most likely when this card is played, the first mode that they're going to choose is the minus three, grab a couple dudes, mm -hmm. and then um, hopefully they have... Uh, creatures left over from turn one yeah, two or three that exactly. are going to protect it right and then next turn you're going to have domri cheat in something big it's yeah cheat in riot. a six cost a six cost with a riot yeah hell yeah so That's i think about. you know i think you know red green aren't really you know it's not really a color combo that i play a lot right it but i do appreciate the uh the merit of just some good red green beats you right know? <laughs> Yeah. At 17 bucks, I think this is a very reasonable price for this card. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I think it'll settle. think it'll go down, though. Yeah, I think, I think it'll, it'll settle down. Um, you know, it, the deck that wants it probably doesn't want four copies of it. So it's going to be priced like a, you know, somewhat used two or three of Mythic in a deck, which is around, you know, 10 to 12 bucks. Yeah, you know, I think a four cost in a, a red green deck you know you're playing this on turn three if you're playing land or where else yeah uh so that's I, see that and cheating is how how i would do this i would just rush this guy out i don't know i'm looking forward to trying well, out it, Don bro Ray. like turn one land or elf turn two merfolk branch walker turn three this right and then it's like you know turn turn four you're playing like a carnage tyrant yeah with haste is that is that correct i think it is yeah, right I think that math works out pretty good man pretty I actually, good. it is pretty good next up we've got a planeswalker i don't know about dovin grand arbiter he is a creature attacking blue white azorius planeswalker yeah he's kind of like an aggro walker yeah I love any Planeswalker, I will start by saying this, I love any Planeswalker that has the ability to create a dude uh, and and protect itself sure. and not nuke all of its loyalty. Right, yeah, so, I think that's a, hu a huge thing too. I'm a fan of the middle ability and it nets you life, so I think that that's really good. Now, past that man, I, I know that there was a blue tempo deck, you know, that uh, won the last, uh, the playoff for player of the year um or one it was in that tournament and um has been going around in standard and so maybe something with that you've got white in there for some removal put your sealed away you got sideboard cards that are white maybe i don't really know it's weird i think the colors for this card are weird man yeah i think this is more of like uh almost like a blue black but this is of. also the kind of card i'm telling you that 
I, I'll misjudge it, and in two months it'll be like, oh, cool, it's the Grand Arbiter deck. And <laughs> it'll, I mean, be that's a, it'll be a $25, $30 card, and because it's a three-cost, three-loyalty Planeswalker, it'll be a four-of in the deck, and yeah. <laughs> I'll, I mean, bro, I'll eat my I, words. That is so true, though. That is so true because uh, three-cost walkers are notorious for being either really, really, really good or really, really, really bad. Right. And so, I mean, it's like you do have, you know, like we were just talking about him, OG Domri, which is just terrible. Right. Or, Sexy um, Jace from uh, Ixalan terrible. Block. Yeah, yeah, not good. And so when you um, when you look at this, I, I just like, I don't know. Let's compare it very quickly to Liliana of the Veil. Why? <laughs> well, right. Yeah, sure. Exactly. But, but when you're when you're thinking about a three cost walker, yeah, like that's that's like where you go. Oh God, both of these abilities are amazing. You don't even have to worry about Liliana's third ability. You just have to look at the first two. Right. And it's just like they're both excellent. And I don't think that this like I think the middle ability is good, but yeah. neither of these abilities are excellent. And we don't even have to think about the ultimate. Unless unless it really does find its way into like a blue white aggro deck, maybe like a pirate kind of thing. I don't Four know. Four turns later, you've been getting some kind of bonus off of creature you control deals combat damage. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll Dorothy see with, with Dovin. With an ultimate, we want a game ender. We right. don't want Look at the top ten, and then take three cards into your hand. Like, yeah. what does that even do other than after just five, like after four just... turns? Yeah, right, cool. I don't know. I we'll think see. Nine is is a little steep for this card until we see what it does. I don't really think it's worth eighteen ninety nine. But right now, it's all about hype, and people yeah. are are buying cards uh, out of out of theory crafting. That's They're an early. Like... That's definitely an early hype price. Yeah. All right, next card up on the docket. Is that is that the word for this docket? Yeah, on the docket. On the docket. Okay. Next card on the docket: emergency powers. Emergency I, I really powers. I like the name of this card. It's yeah. just like got some bolus in the got, art guys? too. That's pretty cool. The art on this one is sick. Shout out to Chris. I can't I can't see the last name. The picture's not picture's not high resolution enough. So it goes. I think it's Chris Ron. I think that's what it says. Anyway, it says each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. If you cast a spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. So, you know, dude, I'm not a big fan of this card. I think there's some silliness that can happen here. Yeah. But I hate any card that's going to fill up your opponent's hand, yes, dude. Yes, I think that in and of itself is going to be why, you, you know, this doesn't see much play, if any, in standard. I think that in the right commander deck, it could be abused. And, um, oh, you know, sure. they're sure. not drawing up the full seven, and so you're getting to pitch, you know, whatever you've got, uh, get your graveyard back, something like that. I don't really know. Um, I will tell you that if you cast emergency powers during your main phase, everybody shuffles, draws seven, and if you happen to draw a captive audience, <laughs> <laughs> you could immediately cast that card. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that sounds like a very spicy brew. Uh, yeah. I like the idea of Plug, it being... Tune like in on January friction. 16th. We're going to play Re Ravnica Allegiance with a preview account provided by Wizards. Maybe it's just a Emergency Jeskai Emergency Powers deck. Captive you Audience. Black for that, but don't you don't know, even man. play that. Yeah, all removal and counter, and then... I don't know, but you'd have to, you would have to get lucky on your Emergency Powers draw. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting card. I like the name, I like the art, but it's not one that I'll play very often, and I don't think that it's going to be more than five, seven bucks. Um, another uh, another little card kingdom update. This card's four forty nine. Well, there you go. And, I haven't uh, checked the prices, but I sure can call them. You know, it's a. Uh, I I think that that price is high for it. I think it won't see any standard play. Um, and it'll it'll just be a bulk mythic kind of. Yeah. All right, next card we're talking about is Hydroid Crisis. Jellyfish um, Hydra Beast. I I do love cool Simic cards that just have random. Yeah, random and the art is sick. The art honestly looks like something you would have drawn. Yeah, I think the art is great on this. Um, I, I I like what this card does. Uh, I'm, dude, I'm I'm kind of torn because I think that the card could be. Uh, standard playable. I mean, Obviously, it's, like it's, it's limited half a, amazing. Half a Sphinx amazing. Revelation on a stick, right? 
Uh, say again? Half of Sphinx Revelation on a stick? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that's cool. And it comes in and it's like a big, you know, flying trample. Like, like I said, limited, amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, just absolutely, you want this in your limited pool. Definitely. For this sure. is one of the mythics I would love to have in limited. Yeah, I mean, it gets better as the game goes longer. It's, you know, worst case scenario, you just bring it out when you need cards and just play it for one, you know? But also, just... as a four drop, it's a 2 2 flyer that draws you a card. Um, yeah. Not great return on your, on your money there. Spent. But oh wait, yeah, you doable. couldn't even play it for one because you would, you would. Uh... No, yeah, you'd have to play it for four. So X yeah. would be two, yeah. gain a yeah. life, draw a card, and you've got a two-two flying trampler. Not great, but I mean, if you need creatures with plus one plus one counters, this is a four drop for that. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could play it for one, but then it just, you know, uh, you just get a one-one flying trampler. Yeah, I mean, best case you scenario, I think that. would be. Like, as far as where that would delta on how late you want to play it and return for your money, I would think is six, so that you get two life, two cards, and a 4-4 flying trampler. That still is not that great when you talk about it. So, I mean, it's the Hydra. It's cool to, you know, see the Mythic Hydra every set. It's just like, I'm, I'm kind of meh on this one. Yeah, I mean, at a price point of eight ninety nine, I think this is way too high. Yeah, that's going to think... go down. I think this is a... This yeah. is a it's a funsies bin card, mythic. right? It's a limited card. It'll yeah. hold some damage. It'll hold some value because it's funsies, and that's about it. Next up, Kaya Orzov Usurper, and I have to admit, boo. I listened. To, yeah, boo! I listened to the uh, Goldfish podcast this week, and I think Saffron Olive. He said it best, man. He said that he thinks it's interesting that we may have for the first time a sideboard planeswalker. Oh, yeah, for the plus one. Right. And I guess the minus one. Yeah, sure. It's a good sideboard card in decks that have black and white, but it's not, I mean, build around exile, I feel like is too wonky. I mean, it's it's possible, but I, I, don't, I don't see this having much play. It's a significant character and the art is rad. And so I could see it being, you know, eight bucks, 10 bucks. Mm -hmm holding out at 15 maybe but what's the card kingdom price on it right now let me guess 17 uh, 19 dollars 14.99 well i was way over on that one but what i think it'll sell way around over, is what it is right now 15 it is, bucks it is way overpriced yeah and again we're gonna give it the liliana veil treatment right <laughs> like I, I, okay let's let's say this that minus five the ultimate yeah i think that getting this thing's ultimate off is is achievable yeah. a minus five absolutely with three loyalty when it comes in i think that honestly is like what you're trying to do with this card but you want to have like 10 cards in exile oh no i i dude i totally get that but like you know uh let's let's break away from standard but like with like any graveyard exile effects like after bajuka bog play this yeah just like you can just kill an opponent if you can get the ultimate off yeah i could see that i think it's pretty meh though i am not i'm not super not super into it no all right next up is mesmerizing benthid is this the reason is this the reason to play sexy jace it I is, don't know if it, it is. is absolutely not. This is a card that I am thoroughly underwhelmed with. I would take it in limited, but it's honestly not like gotta run this. I think it would be good though. I I, I would run it. I, I'm exaggerating there. I just it's not constructed playable. I mean, it's got hexproof as long as the illusion tokens exist. But when and they block something and die and leave that, you know, so it ties stuff up. I like it. It's 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 very flavorful, but. It's not a card that I'm excited about, other than the art is cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the art is definitely cool. Uh, great, it, it gets hexproof. It does bring a couple O2s. Um, I don't know if there's like some sort of you know creatures that offer like a go wide strategy, and, yeah. and I don't know. Or I don't if this know. card said anything like if it couldn't be blocked, that would be rad. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Or or know. just simply flying. The octopus with flying. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, good suggestion. Or, or maybe not. R and D, you heard it here. That's Jake's application for R and D at MTG. I'm maybe this sure. octopus should have flying. <laughs> Isn't, there <an> octopus? <laughs> Isn't there like? Okay, okay. Island walk. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Bring back island walk. That would be cool. Or I'll island take walk. that. Island walk and swamp walk. There you go, man. Now it's a swampy, swimmy little octopus. I like it. Other than that, I, I think it's going to be five bucks. It's five dollars and forty nine cents right now during the hype phase. I think that go. it's uh, got room to room to go down. Room to go down. Sorry, but you go down twenty thousand leagues. Twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Joke in there. Really connect like with that. the kids. I like that. I'm trying to connect with our younger audience. Next up, we've got Prime Speaker Vanifar, which is... A birthing pod. Birthing pod on an elf ooze wizard. Minus Phyrexian mana, but still four converted. I think that this card is going to see play. Standard play, commander play. I don't think it'll see modern play. Um, Dude, I think it may, man. I well, mean, honestly, it's birthing pod. People are. I know this for a fact, and then I'll let you say what you want to say. But sure, I know sure. people are gonna try and break this. I know people already are trying to break it. Oh yeah, dude. It. it I mean, with this and this effect. I mean, this is essentially, you know, uh, officially, unofficially, yeah. wizards being like, okay, guys, birthing pod was too powerful. It's an artifact. They were able to play Phyrexian mana right. in order to cast it. Let's figure out a way to make this this card not extremely abusable. Okay, well, well, instead of it being an artifact, let's put it on a dude. Mm -hmm. And instead of it being something where you can have multiple on the battlefield, let's make it to where it's legendary. Yeah. And so I think that they've got closer here. Like you can't kill it with just like you know um, a lightning, lightning strike. strike or yeah. A lightning bolt. I was gonna say that you need the lava coil to finish this off. Now lava coil is being played a lot because of the Drake deck that's running around. But you're right, it avoids shock and lightning bolt, which is huge. This card, absolutely 100% standard play. Yeah, I the, think we'll see it in standard play too. Get, yeah, dude, the value that you get from, you know, repeatable ETBs. Yeah. Like, it honestly, man, it's kind of like gross how, how like, I know what Birthing Pod does, and yeah. you get to just run a toolbox. Exactly. Like, you can just run, like, one Plague Crafter. Right. Like, you can run one Ravenous Chupacabra. Raven yeah, I was just about to say, like, Ravi Chup, come on in. Like, bro, like, seriously. And then you get to run all of the stuff that you, like, you make sure you have your Llanowar Elves. You yeah. make sure you have, you know, all your green and blue or in, and that support. And then you just go in and you do pretty much what it, I mean, sh dude, we're about to talk about Rakdos the Showstopper. You could run one of those. Yeah, exactly. I think at four toughness and four mana, this is even a candidate to possibly be a four of in a deck because a deck like that is going to re rely on it so much. And that... you know the first one and the second one are going to get removed. Exactly. Yeah. So I that's mean... going to push the value up. And while we're talking about value, I will say this one, uh, of course, a lot of these foil mythics are going to have a lot of value. But this one in particular, because of Commander and because of the art, look at all the white and light blue tones Forget in this card. About. The foil Forget of this card about. is going to be sickly expensive compared to the rest of the set. So I think that this is a win on all fronts, man. Yeah, the art, like the, this artist designed this card knowing that the foiling on it is going to make it pop. When for a commander man just sitting on her throne, chilling with her Triton, it's a very, it's a very cool card. I love this card. I would build a commander deck around this card. Um, and I'm sure that it's going to see standard play. Tune in next next Wednesday at the 16th and you can see us play Ravnica or Allegiance. <laughs> I'm just so hyped on it, man. I think I think at a price point of twenty two ninety nine. Uh, Prime it's gonna Speaker, go uh, Vanifar. I, yeah, especially if it's... I mean, the only thing that might stifle its growth is the fact that it is legendary. Sure, right. And, uh, and that's that's the reason I say it's maybe a four of candidate, but we'll see. I mean, in EDH, I, I'll tell you, if you can pick up the pre-release foil or the pack foil of oh, this when it comes man. out for like... For I don't like, even think honestly, about like pre-release foil. Oh, that would be... Like 60 or less? Yes. Like, I feel like you should jump on it because it, it will absolutely be a commander. It will absolutely be played in standard. 
And uh, I, I actually think that because Pod is banned in Modern, yeah. that that this this does have some some. Right. Uh, They're just like birthing Pod players. Some this is the best you can have. Here you go. We'll see. We'll see. Next stop. We have Rakdos, the showstopper. Rakdos, the meme lord, edge lord. This guy was made for Arena. This guy was them going, all right, we need a splashy card for Twitch. We got this demon that likes to have big murder theaters. Here we go. <laughs> uh, it's it's a pretty much uh, it's pretty much as close to hearthstone as you're gonna get in magic the gathering yeah it really really is and it is it does get it smells a little like hearthstone i'm like <laughs> yeah and there's a little bit of hearthstone on it but, but dude, magic was doing i love this effects. card like they've been doing coin right. flips for a long time it's so it's so part of their lore and Definitely. i love that they're embracing it and it's even on this big beefy mythic six six flying trampler yeah i it's like it like there's some avoidance there there's some i mean it can if you build it correctly you can ensure that the coin flips can't hurt you so it's all one-sided right. i mean of course the downside is it's a coin flip so you can't like you could kill the wrong creature you could kill no creatures you could kill all creatures but that's kind of you know that's what you are getting with rakdos the showstopper i will say that Liliana's contract now has another demon that could fulfill her you win the game clause at the bottom. If you know anything about me, if the card says you win the game, I'm gonna think about trying to play it. <laughs> yeah. Approach of the Second Sun became a deck. Loved it. You know, a lot of people wanted to do something with I played the, it when uh, it was Turbo Fog, though, not Super Control. I stopped playing it when it was Super Control. I don't know why I'm being hoity-toity about that, like I won't play Control decks, but... Hey, he played it. Hey, guys. <laughs> look, look, I was, I was in on card, all right? Second Sun, but fuck. degenerate fog card, right? <laughs> right, exactly. He played it just degenerate. I made lots more friends with my fog deck, okay? Oh, yeah. But Rakdos, I'm a huge fan of. I'm definitely going to build it into a deck because of Liliana's contract, number one. And number two, it's just, it's up my alley. It's the kind of card that I like to play. All right, after that, we've got Ravager Worm. The six cost four or five with Riot that when it enters has two modes to fight a creature or destroy a land. This is a card and it has been confirmed on Twitter by a designer of Magic the Gathering that was designed for best of one play. So essentially designed for Arena. And he came out and just said that on Twitter. Wow. Straight That's up, interesting. And straight up said that there are multiple cards in this set, especially split cards, that that's that were designed specifically for best of one play. And he didn't specifically say Ravager Worm. He was talking about split cards, so I don't you know misquote him. But I mean, this feels like it was designed for best of one. Well, let's let's just say. You know, I, I realize that Arena has some some best of one formats, but Two Headed Giant has always been a best of one, you know, yeah, format. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there and are pros and cons for it, paper. man. I mean, I think that a Magic set, while we're talking about that one specific thing, I think a Magic set is big enough for them to design a lot of different type of stuff for a lot of different type of players. That's the beauty of each set release. I mean, it's it, nobody would be going, oh, this card was designed for Commander. Why aren't you keeping it in Standard? That doesn't make sense. People say, oh, this looks like a card that was designed for for Commander. I say it all the time. And so when, sure. when I, that was my input on the discussion on Twitter was, yeah, so what if they picked, you know, 10, 15 cards out of the set and we're like, all right, we're going to design these for best of one play on Arena. It's not them being like, that's the only way that Magic will be played from now on. It's just yeah, them, no, it's no, them exactly. designing for and different I'm, stuff. And I'm sure that's what everyone said. They were right. all like, Oh my god, they're moving away from two out of three play! Right. Ah! Run to the hill! I think that there's a balanced point of that discussion, and I also think that, to pivot, that Ravager Worm is pretty nasty, and I think that it will definitely see play simply bro, because of its bro, versatility. Easily. Versatile. Oh my gosh, That's so it. versatile. Can I come in as a hasty 4-5, or as a beefy 5-6, six for 6, alright? Then you also get the abilities that you are going to talk about. Well, yeah, the abilities here, you know, uh, this is going to eat whatever Ascanta turns into. This is going to eat whatever <laughs> uh, 
you know, but but it's also <laughs> going to fight things. Right. So at $4.49, I think there's so much room for this card to go up. Yeah, I just this think... looks like an 8 to $10 Mythic to me because, I mean, the aggro decks are going to try and optimize as low as possible. So the most popular one is going to be like Burn because that card, bro, that deck is could... still getting support but i think i think that this will be a eight to ten dollar card maybe get up in the 15 range this is one of the cards that could play next to carnage tyrant i don't know if you'd want to play it next to carnage tyrant yeah I, but... and that's also the question is carnage tyrant because of the meta still the best i tend to lean towards versatility a little bit but you yeah. know i don't know I am happy to trade power and toughness for versatility. Yeah. And that's what we that's what happens here with this card. But you know, we were just talking about Domri and uh, everyone knows Llanowar Elf is in the format. Right. This is a card that could be coming out as early as turn four. Yeah. You know, so I think that, you know, having, you know, a hasty, you know, uh five six oh, yeah. coming in on turn four, that's nothing to shake a stick at. I mean it, it's it's obviously it's not going to have hex proof like um, the Nullhide Ferox, which yeah. could be coming or in. Or Carnage and, Tyrant. But, you know, it's just like, I, I think it's a really good card. I think for $4.49, that's a very reasonable price. Yeah. And for uh, limited, uh, absolutely amazing. Oh, wow. Amazing yeah. bomb. Next up, we've got Seraph of the Scales. Uh, I mean, this is a very cool card for me because it evokes memories of my first and favorite magic card, Desolation Angel, um, in art and how the how the painting has been done. It kind of gives me that same vibe. It's that black white, you know, angel that's not quite good, not quite bad. But as a card itself, I mean, it's I really like it. It's four power on a four on a four cost flyer. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's four power and a four cost flyer. At the and end of the day, you gotta look at that and go, hmm, maybe I play this. Yeah, I mean, it's so wild that we just have Magic: The Gathering cards, another card uh, that's not legendary. Right. Um, so you can play multiples of it, yeah. and you could just give it vigilance for one white. So this is essentially a four cost, four three Vigi flyer with death upside. Yeah, well, you can give it Death Touch, and when it dies, yeah, it has upside when it dies. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you end there's up with so two much power going on still. Here. Yeah, there's a I lot going think, on here. I even think it's it's uh, higher cost, or I, I even think it's like almost a higher rarity than Mythic, man. Well, it's a very very good card. The art is sick. I would love that on a poster. I'm just going to talk about the art a bunch on this one. This is going to be my new computer background for a while. It was Desolation Angel, but now yeah. it's, now it's Syncope. But I think this is going to take the spot. Um, and it, the card as as a card, this is so standard playable. It's insane. This is such a limited bomb. It's insane. I don't know much about modern or enough for this to maybe make a splash there. Seems a little expensive for that format. Again, don't know anything about modern. But I, and commander, you know, it's just fine. It doesn't have a ton of impact when it hits the field, so it's not a card that, you know, in an angel tribal it would be sick. This this card kills Carnage Tyrant, man. Yeah. I mean, this card kills Carnage Tyrant, and then, Survives. I mean, obviously some will trample over, but then it has two two flyers. Right, and the Vigi is going to is gonna halt the aggro decks in their tracks. Yeah, there's a lot to like here. I think we're going to see a lot of Seraph of the Scales. No, I mean, this looks like an $18 rare to me. Yeah, it's only 10 bucks on Card Kingdom, which I think is a steal. I think 10 bucks um, is a steal for Seraph of the Scales. Dude, dude, think about this. If there were a sorcery that just said... Create two one one spirit creature tokens with flying. How much do you think that sorcery would cost? Yeah, three or four. Three, dude. Right. It would cost three. <laughs> so, so for one extra mana, yeah. you get a body ahead of it and Vigi Death Touch Fire Breather essentially. Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's really good, man. I like this card a lot. Yeah. Scargan Hellkite is next. This is our four four flying dragon for five. It's got Riot, it's flying, it's got dealing two damage divided as you choose for four and putting plus one, plus one counters. No, you can use the ability with plus one, plus one counters. I think it's fine. I think Unlimited, it's sick. I think 
maybe it sees play in the red deck, but I don't think the red deck really needs it. Well, what's cool about this is it can come in with haste. Sure. As and if four, it doesn't four. come in with haste, you get to use that ability on the bottom. Right. Which is great. Yep. Um, the red deck always needs a nice, big, hasty finisher. And so I think if, if um, you know, we get further away from, like, Arclight Phoenix decks, which, you know, is our, our flying hasty. But, you know, Arclight Phoenix is a very specific deck. I shouldn't... I shouldn't compare this card to Arclight Phoenix. It's well, look, very, this very card, and go with me here, but this card right now in the format is Experimental Frenzy. Instead of Haste, you get this, you know, luck of the draw uh, engine to refill your hand with burn spells and get that last four or five damage on them. Now, does this swap with that card? Maybe. Maybe this is more consistent and you at least know, okay, I've got four haste power in my hand or I've got a flying 5-5 five five that can start picking off the little threats. Maybe that's maybe that's more useful than maybe striking gold with experimental frenzy. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the card leaves um oh god. It, it uh, it's yeah. I, I don't know, I'm like eh. just... I'm like eh. this looks like a $5 mythic to me honestly. Yeah, it's 7.99 right now yeah. uh, on pre-sales. And dude, it's just I, I maybe it's just because we're looking at all these mythics that are just so much better. I mean, I, I don't think you know a four four hasty flyer for yeah. five is anything to shake a stick at. And no. I, I, I think the ability is just honestly is just fine. And as you get further into the game, you know, being able to consistently deal two damage yeah. is is good yeah. that is good yeah absolutely and it's target it's just not restricted to creatures or players or anything like that i mean and at the end of the day this card is a dragon wearing a hat <laughs> all right and the final card we're going to be talking about this evening is the spawn of mayhem i can't love this card enough dude the look at his hand his hand is a mace oh my god yeah the art is very cool i am always just dude oh I don't know what it is. I know that you really like this card, mm -hmm. but I almost feel like, well, okay. If, you, <laughs> if you're casting it, if you're casting it for three, yeah. it's just absolutely amazing. Oh yeah. Oh if yeah. You're, if you're not casting it for three and it's just a four, four flying trample, it's still good. Yes. But I think at like a price point of 18, which is what it's at right now, excuse me i think, I think it's a i, I think, think it's, it's more of a 15 dollar card it looks like a 12 15 dollar card to me but i've been um as many of you may know i've been trying to force mono black in this standard i got it up to gold haven't tried to get it past that in the best of ones but this is a card that that deck wants i've had trouble in the three drop spot because midnight reaper is the best in slot there for mono black deck in my opinion um, I've also messed around with Whispering Shade, but it's just okay. Sometimes it's great. It's easy to remove. Spawn of May and doesn't have any avoidance. Spawn of Mayhem comes with double avoidance, and I can maybe cheat it out at that three drop slot. And at the worst, it's in the four drop slot, and that's Chupacabra right now. I do run four in that deck, but you know that's a that's a slot that is kind of up for grabs. The Chups can go down because there's a ton of good black removal. Chups isn't really, you know, most mana efficient for me to be playing, even though it's fantastic. Yeah, um, I I think that the card is really good. It's another card that goes with the Liliana's contract demon clause, yeah. which yeah. is neat. Yeah. Um, you know, I I exactly. think that if if this card is consistently coming out on turn three, I think it's going to be a real real beast to deal with because it's if you play it alongside, you know, like Doom Whisperer, right? And so you know that this card is going to be coming out on turn three. You have Doom Whisperer coming out on turn five, and it may be this coming out on turn four. Right, exactly. That's I, that's why I like this card so much because it fits so nicely into that little niche spot of the mana curve on the deck that i'm considering it it can be cheated out or it slot it slots in perfectly at four starts this timer on them and you just need to keep your life above theirs would you like it more if instead of spectacle it had riot yes yeah 
Yeah, because then it could be a 5-5 five, five for four or a hasty 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I mean, I think I think this would be a five mana cost card if it had Riot. But I, I still think that Spectacle is just an unknown for a lot of people. And it just, we'll figure out the best enablers once we see the, uh, you know, um, commons and uncommons well, from what, this set. Well, let me ask you this. What is your early game in that black deck? And how likely are you going to be able to get them to lose life so you can play this for its spectacle? Turn two, best in slot turn two is the uh, explore bear for black. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the card right now. I think, I think this actually plays well. Uh, and this is going to sound silly, but alongside some unblockable merfolk. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You know, I think being able to get through with that I'm silly, you black. know, one yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I could and see then it. play this guy. But see, I think that we're going to get in this set, especially with Rakdos and Gruul, some card that says when it comes into play, deal one damage to any target. When it comes into play, deals one damage to both players, something like that. Yeah. And so you, I, I think that based on the mechanics we've seen without the full spoiler in front of us, I think that this set might have a suicide red black or a suicide black deck in it that would be very fun to play. Maybe not, you know, top eight quality, but still a very solid, very fun deck. I mean, bro, if there's like a dude that comes out or just like a, a any kind of any kind of thing that's just uh at the beginning of your upkeep this creature deals one damage to each player mm -hmm. that's like exactly what this card wants yep this card absolutely just like a sulfuric vortex like a baby sulfuric vortex on a stick oh yeah would be really cool a little bit of life gain offset it liliana's yeah. contract to win the game with all the demons i just really want that deck to happen yeah, I think that'd be cool. Well, everyone, thank you so much for spending your time with us. As always, we appreciate your time. We know it's valuable, and we love that you want to spend it with us. Yeah, thank you so much. I know that there's a, a lot of other stuff that you could be doing, but the fact that you are here on this journey with us means a lot to both of us. If you've gotten this far, consider subscribing, consider hitting like if you liked the video, consider hitting dislike if you didn't. Don't forget to tune in to our Ravnica Allegiance stream on January 16th. And if you're watching this in the future, how is everything? Is it going well? Is it, is it, has it spun out of control? Is there... Possibly, possibly. But other than that, I am It always out. scares me, it always scares me to think, is it spinning out of control, you know? That's how we like to end our videos with some existential dread. Yeah. <laughs> it's very like, I don't know, is it Orzov or Rakdos to be thinking about existential dread? Ooh, Orzov only wants money. Rakdos doesn't care Demir? about anything happens. Yeah, Demir? I would say Demir, maybe. Or Let us it? know in the comments which guild in Ravnica has the most existential dread. Yeah, which which group? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Let us know that. Other than that, I'm tapped out. Peace. Goodbye.